One of the key points I make in talking to people about climate change is that the canary in the coal mine of climate, the indicator that scientists all over the world have been focused on for the last few years, is the northern polar ice cap. Since 2007, the steady decline of the ice cap has accelerated rapidly, and scientists say we have entered a tipping point, with the ice cap racing perhaps 60 years ahead of the most pessimistic models. But of course, the deniers are ever creative, and I wasn't surprised when a recent email from a denier friend made the claim that ice was expanding at the northern cap. When I saw the same thing repeated in a comment on this page, and in a trashy denier blog, and heard it from a sweet little old lady at a church luncheon, I knew I had my crock for the week. Now, it's clear that the ice cap shrinks in summertime. In recent years, that shrinkage has been greater than ever. Of course, every winter, the ice freezes back. But over the last three decades or so, there's been a significant difference. Do we have a math problem? Many deniers can't seem to distinguish between area and volume. Let's take a look at the issue. You're looking at a color-coded map of the northern polar ice cap that I received from a research climatologist. The colors represent the thickness of the ice as determined by sophisticated sensors. What I want you to look at is the red. The red is the oldest, thickest ice, the so-called perennial ice. It's ice that has made it through many seasons and is generally several meters or many meters thick. I'm going to start an animation showing what's been happening to the ice over the last three decades, and I want you to pay close attention to the perennial ice. You'll be able to see the years going by on the lower left corner, and you can see the ice cap melt to a small extent in summer and then freeze back out to its widest expanse in winter. But are you looking at the red? It's going away. With each passing year, the perennial ice has been steadily deteriorating. As the winter ice freezes back, it tends to freeze back much thinner, more fragile, and subject to melting in the coming year. It's a downward spiral, a self-reinforcing cycle in which the Arctic ice continues to lose mass. When it freezes back in winter, it tends to look not so much like this, but more like this. So where do you go to get good data on snow and ice? Well, here's a clue. How about the National Snow and Ice Data Center? When you go check out what the actual experts say about the data, you get this. Because we had a cold winter, the public might think things have gotten better, but the loss of the perennial ice says they're not getting better at all. And 2008 represents the lowest volume of Arctic sea ice on record. And in addition, the Arctic ice is in its death spiral. So that's the difference between area and volume. But if you do want to keep track of the area of ice, the NSIDC keeps a running graph at their website. I check on it often and here's what it shows now. For the current Arctic sea ice extent, defined as the water with at least 15% ice cover, here's the average for the period 1979 to 2000. You can see the extent shrinks in the summer and goes back up in the winter. Look at the difference in the extent of 2007 ice, and here's up to the end of 2008. So don't cheat yourself by going to secondary sources of information. Do yourself a favor and seek out the real data. These professionals do a good job of putting it in a form that ordinary intelligent people can understand. And I want to thank you for all your support on this series. I hope you'll keep coming back and tell your denier friends. They don't have to live on the dark side. Just check out Climate Denial Crock of the Week and help us get the word out on the most critical problem of our time. Thanks for listening.